Before they had trucks they used to get the logs down to the sawmill and for export uh, by putting them in the river and uh, waiting till they reached the mouth basically. And the voyage could take several years. Uh, years. Here, uh, there was a tunnel through the mountain uh, and the logs were... Um, they came down the lakes in rafts and at the mouth of the tunnel, the upper end, they were, the rafts were taken apart. The logs went through the tunnel in single file and down here they were assembled again. And if you look here on the ground, this is all a giant pile of rusty steel wire. Wire like this was used to bundle up the, um, the logs into new rafts before they were picked up by small steamboats and taken out to, to the sea for export. Um, what's this? Shit. Well, it's a lighter, what do you call it? A barge. Uh, it's uh, sunk. You can call that a wreck. But very, very, very low water. It should be possible to, to bring it afloat again. This lake is actually tidal. So uh, I thought somebody should float it and uh, get it taken away for, for the scrap value. Right now it's just being decorative. Today is high water, as you can see. Oh, yes, of course. This is the mouth of the tunnel, and uh, it was finished in 1908. Uh, we're standing at the point where uh, you can see that there are two wings here that could be swung off from either side to uh, directing the logs that came down here single file into either the right hand or left hand uh, channel and there was a telephone that would crank there the recipient would be sitting there and they would say now we sent the last logs belonging to so and so uh, because the logs were actually the owner or the buyer all the way from uh, inland to the sea uh, the farmers who owned the logs and who cut them didn't have the money for, for the transportation. So the logs would be marked at the point where they were thrown into the river and you would read from the mark who owned them. And there would be only one mark inside each... Uh, I mean every log in each raft would, be, ha would have the same mark. So they would pull down and when you're done with one mark you would switch the, these wings over to the other side and then over here, there would be what they call the Moose apparat, which is the, the machine that tied the wire around the new rafts as they were reassembled. It was heavy work. And right now, this tunnel uh, carries only... I mean, you can see up there, uh, there's a beautiful little granite uh, portal where the water comes out of the ground with a plaque. And it says this was finished in uh, His Majesty King Haakon VII's third year of reign. I didn't remember the inscription correctly. It says, built in Hokon the seventh, the first to third uh, year of reign. And this thing here, this tunnel, is where the money for our house came from. The man who uh, built our house made his money by being a foreman here. They had about 50 people working here in, in the season. But there were only two people who had work all year round, and he was one of them. He was a foreman. We're we going to go find a staircase. Yes. This is so cool. If you look down here, you'll see that the tunnel was originally lined with wood. It's rotted away now. In the early 50s, uh, there was a guy who fell in when he was working at the upper end of the tunnel. And before he knew what was happening, he was sucked into the tunnel and disappeared. And they immediately shut down uh, the supply of new logs, and uh, they were very scared. He emerged here, uh, healthy, somewhat wet, needed to go home and ch change his head. <laughs> and uh, they wanted to have him checked out by a doctor, but I don't think he allowed that. He was fine. Now I wouldn't try to do it, because the water is not very deep, and... Uh, and since the wood is rotted away, you'll be scrubbing against rocks all the time. You can go in a barrel. In a barrel, yes. <laughs> you can see here that this uh, little dam is operated hydraulically. Uh, a remote control from that little hut there. 
And this that we're seeing here is the drinking water of Fredrikstad. And the reason they want to get the drinking water from here rather from, than from the lake is that technically this is upstream from Sarpsborg. Sarpsborg's sewer goes straight into the river uh, after some kind of cleaning. And uh, just for the sake of safety, Fredrikstad wanted his drinking water to be from a source that's upriver from Sarpsborg. And this is the closest they could get it. So they, when the tunnel was no longer transporting logs, they acquired the tunnel, the whole system, and started taking drinking water. And you can see here from the currents that uh, the water is going, most of the water is going down here. There's a lot of water coming down here. And this house contains the pumping system. And then there are pipes going across the river, uh, across the lake, and down to Fredrikstad with the drinking water. So what you see here is a staircase that was built to get people to work back and forth. They didn't have cars, of course. That was only for rich people. So, uh, to get from our house down here for the poor man himself, of course he would have a staircase. Uh, it's something like 120 steps or something, and uh, it's kind of rotten. I'm not sure we can go up the whole way, but let's try. Okay. Oh. Well. It's not terribly strong anymore. Can I go next? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 